to the Sugar Daddy Podcast. I'm Jessica. And I'm Brandon. And we're the Norwoods, a husband and wife team here to demystify the realm of dollars so it all makes sense while giving you a glimpse into our relationship with money and each other. We are so glad you're here. Let's get started. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It is very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based upon your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a licensed professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information you find in our podcast and wish to rely upon whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. Babe, can you believe it? Our first season of the Sugar Daddy podcast is a wrap. It's crazy. It's actually kind of crazy since we had, from the time that we talked about actually doing it to actually doing it wasn't that long of a period of time so i know i'm really proud of us for taking action i think there's hundreds of thousands millions of people that have great ideas but how many of those ideas actually turn into reality turn into a project or a product or something tangible versus just living in their head i mean I'm glad that we took action on this idea, but I definitely had several <laughs> other ideas that I fall into the category of not taking action. But I am beyond thrilled that we actually did this. And if I do say so, I think we're doing pretty good considering we are still very new to this. I think I think we're doing great. I This episode is a pat on the back for ourselves for doing it, launching the podcast, putting it out in the world. I'm really proud of you for everything that you've done to get this off the ground, right? I, for those of you who haven't potentially listened to the first episode where we talk about the inception of the Sugar Daddy podcast, it literally came out of a dream that I had. And I know that sounds fake and corny, but whatever, but it's real life. I woke up in the middle of the night, wrote this idea down, told Brandon about it a few weeks later, because I honestly, I mean, it was the middle of the night, so I forgot about it. And then a few weeks later, we were driving somewhere and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to tell you about this idea. (laughs) And he loved it. And so we started crafting what it would look like to actually do it. I reached out to my illustrator. She put our graphic together, our logo, logo, and Brandon started researching mics. And we talked to a couple of friends that have podcasts about, you know, what hosting sites do they use and, and all of that. And we just started digging in and doing research. And then we said, all right, let's pick a date for us to do our first recording. We coordinated, I don't remember which mom it was, but with one of our moms to get the kids out of the house so we could have a quiet space. And that is where our Meet the Norwoods episode, which is our most listened to episode to date, was created. So I'm just really proud. Like, we did it, babe. For the longest time, (laughs) Jess was saying that I needed to find a way to get across my ideas that I consistently have on a social media platform, which just the way that I go about, if you've been listening, the way that I talk about things, that's not really the one that's best for me because I would say I'm a little bit (laughs) long-winded. A little bit. But Mm -hmm. um, this has definitely been a good way for me to get my ideas out. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully a good way for you guys to receive information that I think is so important and often not received or maybe not given the correct context of it. Yeah. And when it comes to social media and I have I battle with this all the time, too. I think because we are such quality people, it's really hard, especially when you're talking about finance, which is not this polarizing, sexy thing, right? It's hard to make really good content that is really, um, that gets a lot of traction and goes viral. And I mean, yes, people obviously have done it, but you're just never going to see Brandon and I do silly videos about finance just for likes. Like, A, we don't have time. We don't have the energy. It's not who we are as people. We don't enjoy that. And we're just not going to do it, right? Yeah, so, if anyone out there listening knows me, they know that it's just not going to happen. That's not me. And we try to be authentic as possible. And it works exactly. For some people, yeah, know. and and that's not to say that we don't. At the end of a long day, after the kids are in bed, you know, veg out on some of those videos that are silly and pointless. And it's nice to decompress with that kind of stuff. But it's just not what we're going to do. Yeah. For so me, don't expect it. <laughs> yeah, and for me, I didn't want to just create content that was just for clickbait. 
No. Because I think there's a lot of, there's too much of that now revolving around finances. I literally had a friend texting me about something they saw on TikTok this morning. Oh, gosh. And I was like, it's not quite accurate. I understand what they were going with it, but it's not quite accurate. And yeah. kind of explained through a few things, but... We try to produce content that is valuable at the end of the day. Like, that's the most important part to me. Yeah. Maybe we should do, like, a TikTok Tuesday where we just do, like, a super quick episode of something finance-related that we've oh, seen on TikTok. I but then we'd, we'd literally <laughs> just be sitting there because there's so much garbage. Anyway, what was your favorite episode of season one? For me, I'm going to have to say that my favorite episode was episode number nine, which was our DIYers. No surprise there. <laughs> that is one of his favorite topics. Well, the, why? The reason I think it was a good is one the reason it's my favorite episode is because I think there's something. Grant, I think there's something that people can take from every episode, but in this specific episode, I think a lot of people thought that maybe I was going to come down on DIYers, but more or less it was determining if you are one. So yeah. Gave you some good ways to determine if you are one. And if you are a DIYer, I also provided, I believe, some good resources and good areas that you should be focused on so that you can be an efficient DIYer. Yeah. So, I mean, I know it's a topic, a big topic for you because you talk to DIYers, you read from DIYers, you're in those forums and in those, you know, places where people are just trying to do it themselves and you're kind of cringing on the inside because of because it's so easy to make mistakes yes right exactly and you want to help mitigate those mistakes yeah and it's one of those things where i want to help as many people as possible right and i think the biggest thing that i can do is helping you determine if you should even be doing this first right yeah i think we gave some really good information there you know on both ends of the spectrum i think you did a great job and I, again, one of our favorite sayings is you don't know what you don't know. And there's so much to manage when it comes to finances and having a comprehensive portfolio and a protection portfolio and all of that. So if you don't know what questions to ask, how are you going to implement what you need? Exactly. So. So what was your favorite episode of season one? I think it's a toss up. I really liked the Enneagram episode because I surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> because I love I love learning about personality types. I love taking personality type and strength type tests and quizzes, right? Whether it's for fun or professional, I think it's really important to assess who you are and how you are as a person just naturally. And we've yeah. even seen it. She's made me take numerous <laughs> tests. Well, like the five, like, was it the five or five love languages? The love languages. Yes. I think that's so. Oh, I think it's important. It's important, right? Like me showing you love in a way that you don't receive love is a waste of my time and doesn't make you feel loved. So that's <laughs> going to be a barrier in our relationship. Correct. So, but I think too, now that we have children and we have a son and a daughter, I mean, you can just tell, right? Like, Roman has way more of your personality. He's, like, chill and laid back. And then, like, Aston is already high-strung, super particular. <laughs> like, she's already got some neurotic tendencies. And I'm like, ooh, I'm sorry, baby girl. That's me. Which is weird because... She she's looks closer, like you. Yeah, she looks like me. She's also closer to being a Pisces. Right. But, like, she just is my child. Oh, a hundred percent. Right. Looks so like me acts like you. And it's it's we obviously we're raising them the same. They're in the same house. They're only, you know, 17, 18 months apart. Like they they are who they are at birth. Oh, right. It's crazy. <laughs> that was the one thing I said that was the craziest thing to me is that kids are they have who their personalities. They are yeah. From like the get go. You like to think that you have so much influence upon who your child is from a personality standpoint. And I think a big portion of the personality, that's just them. That's it's who just who they as. are. Yeah. And I think that that continues, right? Like we can improve as people and we can be conscious of who we are and, you know, we can make improvements to be more well-rounded and to be more aware. Um, but I think it's important to kind of start from the basics of who are you as a person. And so I really like that episode because it ties in a lot of that kind of science that I like. Um, but honestly, I think our first episode is my favorite. If I had to pick, <laughs> we got so much great feedback of people saying our personalities shine through. They were smiling while listening to us that, I got a ton of messages um, 
of people saying, wow, we can tell how much Brandon loves you based on how he talks about and to you, which was really sweet that that came through, right? You don't see us, you don't see our body language, you don't see us looking at each other. But the fact that people can hear your love for me and your encouragement of all the things that I do, I think is really powerful and speaks to our relationship. And I, I love that that is coming through and shining through. Um, and I also just love that we are doing this, right? Like it wasn't just a thought that we put in a box and never addressed. Like we were like, no, we're going to do it. And, we, and we're doing it together. And we're doing it together, really which cool. I think is really nice because even though Brandon and I work from home together and we're technically in the same space like all day, it still feels like we're ships passing in the night a lot of times. And there will be days where I see him when I run to the restroom, you know, between meetings or fill up my water cup. But like, we're not talking, we're both doing our own things. I'm in meetings all day, etc. And so it's really nice to be able to have scheduled time where we're essentially scheduling to have a conversation, right? Yeah. So I, I love that this is now our hobby, our business together will one day be a business. Um, That's what we're aiming towards. Yes. But I I love that we get this dedicated time together and that we get to share our personality and ourselves and our relationship with others. So I'm going to say episode one, final answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really proud of us. And I actually looked up some statistics about podcasts because even though we we have listened to and love podcasts for years, it's really not something that even though podcasts have been around for quite a while and Brandon and I have been listening to podcasts, we know that it's not a forum that everybody utilizes yet. So it's still like it's still new ish. Right. So I wanted to do some research on podcast statistics and what is the lifespan of a podcast. And it's really short. So the re- all of the research I found basically says that anywhere between seven and 10 episodes is what a typical podcast show releases. And then it's called the podcast fade. It like fades out. It dies. You no longer get new episodes. That's interesting. And we... This is, I think, episode 11, like full episode 11. And then we did some bonus episodes. So I think we're at like 14 or 15. And we already have some content that we started to create for next year. Yeah. So we are we're on it. We've already got a full list of content that's going to be coming out in upcoming seasons. We're already connecting with people. That's one of the biggest updates we wanted to share going into 2023 is as much as we've gotten amazing feedback from our listeners just about you listening to Brandon and myself, which is so encouraging, we do want to bring other people in. We do want to bring in industry experts, subject matter experts within their fields, a variety of fields. And we really want to invite people into our conversations. And so we're really excited about the people that we're going to be bringing on in our upcoming season. The first of which is our dear friend, David Kane. He is a mortgage banker um, with over 20 years of experience, and he is in the top 1% of mortgage bankers in the United States, which is huge. So he's not just our friend, he's a subject matter expert. The housing market is crazy. Our house is currently on the market. We go to him for our mortgages. Yes, we do. (laughs) We close on our new house, hopefully sometime in January. And we know that this market is crazy. So we wanted to talk to him in uh, a relevant time frame, right, of what is the market doing? What do people need to consider if they're looking to purchase their home? And so we're really excited about sharing that conversation with you. We've already got a lot of people lined up to interview everything from fertility and finance, talking to people who have gone through and paid for IVF, for adoption, for surrogacy. Um, We also have people lined up that are maximizing their income potential by um, monetizing things that they're good at. So we've got a couple people lined up that we're going to speak to about being essentially influencers, right? And what does that look like? financially for them and how much money have they been able to earn. So we've got a lot of great content coming. Um, We're really excited about it, but we also need to hear from you 
about topics that are of interest, things that you're seeing, that you're hearing, that you're really um, needing more information about, because we want this podcast to be relevant for you and for your needs. Yeah, so we were definitely curating, you know, the list of things that we want to speak about, but we definitely want to hear from you guys, the listeners, Mm -hmm. as far as what you're interested in. Um, You know, some of the other areas that I'm really excited to have a conversation about is uh, during February, which is, for those that maybe don't know, it's Black History Month. Um, I'm not going to say anything about us getting the shortest month of the year. But you just said something (laughs) about it. It's okay. But um, we are going to be talking about, you know, the racial wealth gap. And, you know, what has created that and what are some things that we can work on to hopefully try to uh, lessen that gap, but also have a much deeper conversation during that time frame uh, for an understanding for why, you know, the black American is where they're at today and the things that have contributed to the disparity that has caused that wealth gap. Because I think a lot of people simply think that slavery ended and that was it. Right. Well, let's save all the goodness yes. for our episode. Don't get into it because I can see it in your eyes. You're like ready to go go into it. And that's not what this episode is. So racial wealth gap, uh, things like Black Wall Street, right? We want to make sure that we're also educating our listeners on topics that, let's face it, we don't learn in school. Yes. And even to this day, right, our children are not going to learn about the history of Black America in school. And so some of these things that we're going to be talking about might be, they might be new to you. Um, and we hope that as we educate you on all sorts of topics that you also continue to do your own research, reach out with additional questions, but we really want this to be a platform where you walk away saying, wow, I learned something new today. Yeah, we're also going to be talking about the gender wealth gap as well. Yes. So March, we want to focus on women's issues. So International Women's Day always falls in March. It actually falls on your birthday this year, March 8th. Um, But we want to take the entire month of March to talk about all of the topics that have to do with women. So obviously, there is a huge disparity still in the women's wages. So the pay gap there, um, we most of us know that that wage gap is increased if you're a woman of color. We want to talk about how to um, potentially increase your income, right? So anything from interviewing skills, getting away from non-promotable tasks at work. That's a huge topic that I've been doing a lot of research on, making sure that the work that you do during your workday is promotable work, i.e. how many times have you been asked to take notes in a meeting and Chad has never been asked to take notes in a meeting, right? So we're going to talk about Chad. Chad. So we're going to talk about that as well. Um, and Sorry if your name's Chad out there. Yeah, not all Chads are bad, obviously. That's okay. My mom's name is Karen. Your mom is a Karen. Yeah. <laughs> she said, is a Karen. Her name is Karen. Her name is Karen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I see what I did there. So anyways, lots of topics to discuss um, when it comes to Black History Month and women's issues. So we're really excited about that. Uh, Again, we want to do an entire segment on finances and fertility. So if you have been through the IVF journey, the adoption journey, the surrogacy journey on either end, you've been a surrogate or you've hired a surrogate, we would love to hear from you and potentially interview you. So please reach out. Or if you have a close friend or family member that you think would be great on the podcast to talk about those issues please let us know. Really, really important. And then we're also going to have, you know, a conversation revolving around um, mental health and how that affects your finances. I mean, I bet that's a huge correlation there. Yeah. So. And then also even just, you know, diving over into actual physical health and illnesses and how that affects your finances as well. And, you know, things that you can put in place to help protect in the event of those things occurring. Right. So, again, if you're young and healthy, that's probably the time that you should be getting all of your insurances <laughs> and um, protection vehicles, right, yeah. as you like to call them, in place so that if in the event that you do get sick later on in life, you are not uninsurable. So I'm going to dig yeah. back into that. And even some of the topics that we talked about previously, such as, you know, debt reduction strategies, investing, um, we're going to have a deeper dive into those. So we're yes. going to you know, get a little bit more into the, you know, nitty gritty of it. And also, even you know, get a deeper dive into, you know, homeownership and what that looks like mm-hmm. and how that, you know, affects your overall net worth. Yes. So the topics are really 
endless saving for college, paying for college, debt reduction, credit cards. I mean, honestly, there's just not enough time in the day for all of the topics that we have written down that we want to cover, but we're really excited about what we have planned for you for upcoming seasons, the guests that we've already arranged to be on the podcast. Um, And so we're really excited and we're really thankful that you are on this journey with us. Um, I do have a couple more stats because I feel like I kind of veered off of that, um, which is where most people listen to podcasts, which is on Apple. So Apple Podcasts across all listener platforms is at 39%. That was as of October of 2022. And then the second highest place where people actually listen to podcasts is Spotify. So Google comes in a distant third at 2.5%, which means anything less than that. So people, for example, who have their podcasts on YouTube, um, that's like minuscule compared to people listening on their mobile devices, which I thought was interesting because we have talked about from the very beginning doing a video recording or a video portion so that you can see our facial expressions. You can see me roll my eyes when Brandon (laughs) says something where I'm like, oh my gosh, never, and vice versa. (laughs) So we know that you're only hearing us, but seeing us would give you a totally different experience. But I know I do not watch podcasts. I I merely listen to them. So stay tuned. You know, we're going to iterate on what we're doing. We're always going to make sure that we're giving the listeners what they want. So if you'd we're like, always, you know, trying to incorporate new things because yeah, as we said before, this is a new endeavor for us. So we're trying different things and learning seeing, along the way. Oh uh, yeah. Definitely learning a lot. <laughs> yes. All the videos I had to sit through from an audio standpoint on how to do the tech side of this was. I know. <laughs> well, one day I'm just going to speak it into existence. One day when sugar daddy, is like mega huge and we're doing our podcast tour and all the things we'll actually have our sound engineers on staff handling all of that for us. Yeah. Cause it's going to be nice. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, minimum knowledge. Well, we haven't gotten any complaints about what we sound like and everybody has said the quality is fantastic. And I know you and I both listen to professional podcasts with hundreds of thousands of listeners And sometimes they don't sound great. So I think we're doing pretty well. Very true. Another pat on the back for us. Um, I think it's also really interesting to share that 51% of podcast downloads are in the United States. So the U.S. is still the largest listener group for podcasts, with the U.K. and Canada coming in second and third. But they're only like right under six and right under 5%. So really, really small groups. I wonder if there's like a people. correlation to how much time we just spend on our phones in general compared to other countries. That may be a true. Oh, that. so it might yeah, be a pro I could and a see con. that. <laughs> yep. I could see that. Um, and then this is really interesting because, you know, obviously we want to be relevant. We want our podcast to be shared. We want to grow in our listenership. Um, and so as we're looking at our statistics of, oh, so many people, you know, downloaded this episode versus that episode, etc. I think it's really interesting to share that if you have more than 29 downloads in the first seven days of an episode release, you are in the top 50% of podcasts. So check that box, babe. If you get more than 101 downloads per episode, you're in the top 25%. So Mm. check that box. And if you have more than 386 downloads in the first seven days of an episode launching, you're in the top 10%. So we are somewhere... So we're working on that part. Yeah, we're we're somewhere between 11 and 25%. But, I mean, we don't have a huge catalog of episodes yet. And we're new to this. We just launched, I think our first episode came out in July of 2022. It's now December. So, babe, I feel like we're rocking and rolling. I'm just like, I'm giving giving myself some snaps because (laughs) I'm really proud of us. So... I will say, um, because we're just going to, we're going to wrap this up. This really is a pat on the back, kudos, snap, snap episode to us, but also what else to expect. And also just saying, you know, thank you. Yes. Tuning into season one. Thank you. In the works. Yeah. I'm just, I'm so blown away. We've gotten so many messages and DMS. The voicemails are fantastic as well. So we want 
to hear from you. We love the voicemails. Please keep them coming. If you have a, a question that you feel like is random and you, maybe you've even already, you know, quote unquote called in, that's okay. You can leave us another voicemail. You don't have to say your name. You can be anonymous. You can send us a message on our email or on Instagram. Um, you know, we'll definitely respond there. Yeah, we're never going to be those people that if you send us a message that you think is a dumb question or whatever that we're going to post it no, and make fun. No, no, we're no. Here, this, here we're here to, to help. help. Exactly. We want to engage with you and be genuine and interact with you. Keep also the positive messages coming. I love the ones where people are like, oh, you know, we opened a high yield savings account. Yes, We're getting yes. 4%. Like those are huge wins. We want to share them. Um, you know, for those of you who have said like you've paid off credit cards, that you're monetizing something, right? Like we've gotten several messages from people telling us that, you know, now they're, they're charging for resume reviews and resume writing and all sorts of things. So keep that good news coming because it's so encouraging, not only because you're improving your life and your financial state, but also because it shows us that our conversations do matter and that the topics are resonating with you and that you are taking action, which is really just so important. And it makes us so, so happy. Yeah, that's spot on because, you know, me, when I'm working with my clients individually, the biggest joy I get out of working with clients is when they are achieving these goals that we set out. Right. Like the entire purpose of us working together was to achieve these goals. And once they achieved them, like I'm, 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 I feel as I'm as happy as if they were, I achieved the goals myself, you know? Right. Well, it's teamwork, right? It's a partnership. And that's what we talked about in one of our first episodes about choosing a financial advisor. Like you want to work with somebody that, is cheering you on and is with you every step of the way. And that's exactly what you do with your clients. So of course it's a win for them, but it's a win for you too. Oh, definitely. It's, and also that I'm at like, you know, I've been in a point of, I think we have been in a point of our life where we are just as happy for things that we accomplish in our life as for things that our friends accomplish. Absolutely. Like, I love looking through, like one of the biggest things I like about social media is like when I see great things, good things going on in other people's lives, like, yeah, I catch myself just like scrolling through people's stuff and then someone's like, oh, I got a, you know, I got a promotion or I just had a baby. And I'm like smiling ear to ear because I'm just genuinely happy for someone else being happy. Yeah, this we are not. I would say we're competitive when it comes to like, you know, game night, but we are not competing with our friends. We are not competing with the, the no. neighbors up the road. Like we are genuinely excited for other people's wins and successes and we will celebrate them all day. So, oh, nice. yeah. Well, here's what I'm going to leave you with. This is our last episode of 2022, unless something crazy happens that we need to hop back just, on in the next 28 just, days. Just, but Just get through the rest of the year. Just easy. Yes. So what I'll say is this is supposed to be our last episode of 2022. We are so thankful that you have been on this journey with us, are on this journey with us, and hopefully will continue to be on this journey with us. But we are going to leave you with the takeaway, as always, and that is our Christmas wish from you is to please subscribe to the podcast. Please continue to listen. Please continue to write us questions, leave us voicemails, share the podcast with your friends and family on your social media, on your LinkedIn. But also one of the best things you can do, and this is the, the final ask of the year, is please rate and review the podcast. If you're listening on Apple or on Spotify, it's really easy. Hit the five stars. And if you can take, you know, one minute or less to write a review, that is what helps us get noticed. That's what helps us, you know, kind of top the charts, so to speak. Yeah, that's what helps if people are searching for certain topics. Exactly. It helps us come up higher in the search. Yeah. The more ratings and reviews we have, the more the platforms know that our content is valuable to listeners, and that's how it gets pushed and promoted. So please, 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 if you have not already yet, hit the five stars. That literally takes under a second. And if you have another minute to spare, please leave a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, they make us super happy when we can, you know, read through them. But this is really for us to be 
recognized and promoted and found more easily on these platforms. So it's not just that we want the ego boost. It really is so that (laughs) other people can find us more easily as well. And also, too, on the opposite end, if there's things that you think that we should, you know, that you recommendations, like we're always trying to get better. Yes, we're open to feedback. How about you guys just send those directly to us, though? Yeah, don't put those in in (laughs) the review. (laughs) Send them directly to us, and we will definitely take those into account. Yes. We are always trying to improve upon, you know, the quote unquote product that we're producing. Absolutely. We're open to feedback. We want to make this uh, the best podcast that it can be. We want it to be as relevant as it can be for you. And we want to keep you excited about tuning in twice a month. So let us know how we can improve, slide in our DMs, shoot us an email. If you want us to answer your questions, leave us a voicemail, but please, please, please Leave us a review, give us five stars, and we cannot wait to talk to you in 2023. See you all in 2023. Yes. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We'll talk to you soon. Don't forget, Benjamin Franklin said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. You just got paid. Until next time. Thanks for listening to today's episode. We are so glad to have you as part of our Sugar Daddy community. If you learned something today, please share this episode with your friends, family, and extended network. We hope to reach as many people as possible for positive impact. Don't forget to subscribe and connect with us on social media at the Sugar Daddy Podcast. You can also email us questions you want us to answer for our Pass the Sugar segment at the Sugar Daddy Podcast at gmail.com. 